the command line. It is a tool that, you know, we don't use a lot every day. In fact, we kind of try to avoid using it whenever we can. But then, you know, occasionally the situation arises when you want to do something advanced and, well, there is no graphical tool for it. Or at least, you know, you can't find a graphical tool for it. You may have to pay for it or you may have to, you know, scour the internet to download that tool. You don't want to do that. You want to have something that just works right away. Well, I was in that exact situation when I found a pretty interesting command that allows you to do a lot in just one statement. This statement is called four files, and today we're going to spend some time to look at what it does, as well as how we can configure it to do what we want it to do. You're watching another Random Wednesday episode on 0612 TV. Hello and welcome back to another Random Wednesday episode. Today, we're going to talk about the 4Files command, and this is available on the Windows command line from computers running Windows 7 and up. Simply put, the 4Files command is a way for you to run a command in batch over all files in a folder. That's really as simple as it gets, and the configuration isn't very hard to understand either. Simple as it sounds though, it's actually a pretty powerful command. While in my use case, what I wanted to do was to convert a batch of videos from one format to another using the command line utility FFmpeg, there could be quite a few other applications as well. For example, if you want to do some fancy renaming of a set of files in a folder, you can using this command. Without further ado, let us jump into the basics. What I have here is a folder with a bunch of text files as well as a folder, and this folder has more text files in them this is going to be our testing ground for running this program. So let us begin. We're going to begin by just running the command without entering any additional parameters. Just to be clear, this command is executing within the folder that we've just looked at. So let's go ahead and run the command and notice what has happened here. It has just printed out the names of every file it can see. So in fact, even if you already know how to use this command, and you are trying to write something around this command, doing this actually helps you just to make sure that you know your program is looking at the right faults. But once we're done with that, we probably want to do something more useful. So let's take a look at the slash C switch. This is arguably the most important switch because it tells the command what to do for every fault. We're going to keep things simple here in our first experiment by just writing a very simple statement. You can ignore this part because this part has to be there every single time. All it means is I want to run a command and the command is as follows. In this case, the command we've entered is simply echo hello. Now if we were to just run the echo command like this, all your computer is going to do is just copy what you've said and echo it back to you. So very simple here, this is what we're using to just show us that things are working correctly. As you can see, when we run our 4 files command, well, we see a lot of hellos on screen. In fact, if you were to count this number of hellos, you'll notice that it has executed as many times as there are files in the directory. And the reason for that is because it's executing once for each file. So alright, let us now try and do something even more useful. Now, in order to do that, we need to understand the concept of variables. The four files command actually allows you to access some information about the file you're looking at. And this information includes things like the name of the file, the extension of the file, its path, its file size, and even things like its last modified date and time. So with this knowledge, let's try to do something with a little bit higher difficulty. We're going to try and do a batch rename. To do this, we're going to use the move command, which works something like this. We simply say move, and then we say the file name of the file we want to rename. Then we give it its new name. And that is how you rename a file via the command line. You basically just move it to a new name. So we're going to do that in conjunction with the for files function. And in doing so, basically you will be able to rename every single file in the folder. Let's see how it's done. My intention in this case is to take every file and append the word renamed to the end of the file. 
Of course, we can't just do that because that would end up at the end of the extension. So what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna have to just grab the file name of the file, add the word renamed in the middle, and then stick the extension on at the end. It sounds complicated, but it isn't actually that bad. We simply say four files, we simply have the command, and we say move. Now, to refer to the original file itself, all we have to do is to say at file, and of course, this has to come in all caps. This will be substituted by the name of the actual file. So we want to move this file to a new file name, and this new name is what we're going to have to construct. We start by saying at fname. The difference between file and fname is that file includes the extension, while fname doesn't. At the back of this, we simply add renamed, and then we can add dot and the extension itself using the at ext variable. With that done, let's just hit enter and watch as all the files in the directory get renamed. And there you go, we just did a cool batch rename by just using four files and move with variables. Now, that's not the only thing you can do. You can also actually filter so you can change up where four files is looking. You can say, I only want to include certain file types or certain types of file names. So let's take a look at how this works. First of all, the slash p switch tells four files to look in a different directory. So for example, I can actually say, I only want it to look in this folder and we can do the same renaming thing as we've done just now. And as you can see, well, all the files in that folder have been renamed and none of the other files have been touched. We can also do a mask. I'm gonna copy some JPEG images into that folder and I'm gonna do the same rename. Except this time, I'm gonna say slash m star dot jpeg. And what this means is look for all files that end with dot jpeg. Very generally in working with the command line, when you say star, it means that you can substitute any number of letters at this position. Of course, the mask can be more complex than this. It is up to you to you know, choose a combination of letters that expresses your intention correctly. Next up, you can actually tell the four files command to do its job recursively. What we had just now is basically saying, all right, we have this directory or this folder, and we wanna do that particular command on everything in that folder. End of story. If there are subfolders, four files will not traverse into those folders to do the function on those files as well. But when you say you want four files to do its job recursively, then it does that it basically recalls itself for every subfolder and every subsequent subfolder if you have you know, a bunch of nested subfolders. So there you go, three more switches that actually allow you to you know, choose what files you want to affect. Finally, we also have the ability to filter by date and you can do this using both absolute and relative dates. The syntax looks something like this. First, of course, you need to say slash D and a space and then your next character is going to be either a plus or a minus. In general, plus means on this date or later than it, whereas minus means on this date or earlier. With an absolute date, well, the meaning is quite clear. If you say plus, then it means on that particular date you've specified or later, so the command will only match files that fulfill this timing, whereas negative means on that date or earlier. Then we move on to relative dates. Negative values are clear. If I say negative 100, I mean I want to find files older than 100 days old. However, if I say plus 50, what I mean is I want to find files newer than those created 50 days in the future. Yeah, I don't understand that one either, but unless you are a time traveling Windows user, I think you'll do just fine not using this. Here's a quick correction. When date comparisons are performed, the exact date is also considered valid. What this means is, take for example the syntax you see in the topmost row in the table, files with a last modified date falling on exactly the 1st of October will also be affected by the command. And there you go, that was the 4 files command. Now, all the switches that we've looked at earlier on are actually optional switches. As we've seen earlier, you can run four files without any switches at all. 
The reason why I'm telling you this is because you can always omit any switch. You can just have the switches you need and nothing else. That is just one of the many things that makes this command particularly versatile. If you need a textual description for everything that I've mentioned in this video, do pop open the video description. You'll find a link to one of the pages hosted by Microsoft that actually describes this function in detail. That's all there is for this episode. I hope you've learned something today. But until next time, you're watching 0612 TV. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, consider checking out the rest of my work on my channel. Alternatively, you may be interested in a playlist of my earlier work on computing and computer science topics. If you'd like to show me some monetary support, I am on Patreon. You can find a link to my campaign in the video description. Of course, you can simply like this video or leave a comment. I'll be sure to respond as soon as I can. To keep in touch with my future uploads, do subscribe to this channel. And for even more updates, check out the official Twitter account for this channel at 0612TV. Thank you for your support.